When this Decepticon breaks wind, everyone suffers. Hello, my baby! Hello, my honey! Hello, my ragman gal! Send me a kiss by water! Baby, my heart's on fire! Well, here come the remolds. With Power of the Primes carrying on from Combiner Wars, at least some of them were bound to be retools of the figures from that line. In this case, we have a remold of Aerialbot Firefly and slash or Technobot Strafe. Alterations have been made to bring this figure into the Power of the Primes line, and more on that soon. This figure shows off well in its plastic case, and you can see the included accessories, along with character art on the front panel, and a glimpse of the planned gestalt on the side. The back panel now shows off the figure in both modes, and new diagrams showing how to use the enclosed armor accessory, and where to plug in the Prime Master accessory once those become available in stores. The bio reads simply, how will the doom-bringing Decepticon air defense specialist wield the power of the Primes? <laughs> Out of box, Dreadwin comes with his instruction wad. A collectible trading card that shows what he would be like if he paired up with Amalgamous, the Prime Master. In this case it says, takes ominous airborne forms. Ooh. He also comes with the Prime Armor Shield accessory, and one weapon accessory. And here is Dreadwind out of box. He is a remold of Aerialbot Skydive, with some parts being identical, like the wings and the missile pods underneath, and the nose cone. But many parts are updated and different. There are these cannon thingies up front. There are also a few pegs scattered onto the body, which can be used to plug in any Titan Master or Prime Master figure for barnstorming action. The paint applications are neat and clean. The figure is a kind of tealy color with off-white and some purple and silver highlights. There is no landing gear, but it lies evenly on any flat surface. Looking underneath, you can see many of the robot parts folded into a rather obvious box on the underbelly. The arms are plainly visible on the sides, but that is a holdover from it being used as a Combiner Wars mold. The Prime Armor accessory plugs into this hole on top of the jet. It can face either forwards or backwards, depending on your personal preference. And you can also rotate these thumb slash spike thingies forwards or backwards, depending on what you think looks cooler. The weapon accessory will plug into either one of the holes on this side of the plane. They will also plug into a hole underneath either wing. You can also plug them into these holes on the thumbs of the hand accessory slash prime armor. The prime armor also has this removable plastic plug. The cavity left behind is molded so as to contain a prime master figure, or a titan master figure that has been transformed into a head. The plastic plug is not forgotten, this tab at the bottom is designed to fit into the standard peg hole of any Transformers figure. So there is some good playability. You can do more with the jet than just run around the room pretending that it can fly. It is perhaps easiest to transform from plane into leg mode in terms of the Combiner Wars compatibility. Simply pop the nose cone loose from the front, re-angle it, you will see these two tabs here, which conform to these slots on the back of the figure. Push those together until they hold firmly in place. Angle the fronts of the legs out slightly so that you can rotate the entire combiner port assembly around. You will need, of course, to rotate the robot head so that it faces inward and doesn't look so goofy. Clamp the legs back closed afterwards. You will see these tabs and grooves should join together. There is also this tab on the inside of the robot leg, and this small groove on the inside of the robot arm. Those should tab together 
so that the arms and the legs hold firmly in place. Swivel the side tail fins upwards. Untab the wings from the side of the plane body. You will see this accordion hinge on the inside. Angle it so that this small tab and this groove on the inside of the wing join together. Fold the wings so that they match the other tail fins and point forwards. You may then take any Combiner Wars foot accessory or Power of the Primes foot accessory and insert it into this hole at the base of the figure. And this is Dreadwind as a leg module for a Combiner. As you can see, he is proportioned to match the Combiner Wars figures and fits in well with them, even with the garishly colored Technobots. It's a little tough to accept these legs jutting forward, but really is it any different than what they did with Strafe? Transforming to robot mode will be a familiar process for anybody who owns any of the Combiner Warns aerial bot figures. Untab the arms from the sides of the body. Angle them out just a little bit. This will give you clearance to open up the halves of the legs and tilt them forwards. Go ahead and rotate the combiner port upwards so that the robot head is facing forwards and up. You will see this small tab on the inside of the rotating pivot, and a corresponding groove at the top of the shoulder. Rotate them up, and then push the tab into place. Leave the nose cone where it is. Unfold the legs from the back. You may then accordion up the robot thighs. Angle it so that this small groove is pointing backwards. On the inside backs of the legs you will see a corresponding tab. Clamp the leg halves back together, inserting the tab into the groove. The wings which are still rotated downwards on this pivot can now be folded to face forwards against the robot shins. In robot mode, Dreadwind again patterns after Skydive, but with some different molding. The head kind of looks like Optimus Prime. The shoulder cannon plugs are pretty cool, though a little bit like smokestacks. If you have to have a remold, then this is a pretty good one to have. The way the wings and arms swivel to compact the jet mode is well done. The main wings are a sticking point because there doesn't really seem to be any good way to configure them. If you leave them sticking out the back, it kind of looks ridiculous, but they don't really conceal well when you fold them against the shins either. One of the new features is that the combiner port area has an openable hatch at the front that swivels downwards, exposing another peg hole. Take the prime armor accessory, make sure that the peg is angled backwards, and plug it into Dreadwind's chest. Now he looks even beefier and feels a bit heavier too. The Prime Master figures can plug into the front, or a Titan Master figure can as well, same as within the jet mode. The weapon accessory can be held in either hand. You may also use the Prime Armor accessory as a shield. Dreadwind's articulation is everything that you would expect from a Combiner Wars remold with a 360 degree rotating head, shoulders that will swivel 360 degrees, and they are also hinged to allow for splaying. Upper bicep rotation is also included, and the elbows will bend 90 degrees. Full waist rotation is included. The hips are all socketed, and will rotate fully forwards and backwards, and splay in and out. The knees will bend 90 degrees fully, which is surprising when you consider all the jet wing kibble that you've got here. It is easiest to transform him into his Gestalt R mode from his robot mode. Rotate the head so it's facing backwards, then rotate the combiner port so that the blocky bit is facing outwards. Take the robot arms and use the bicep swivel to rotate them so that they are facing backwards then bend the elbows 90 degrees. As with Combiner Wars, that seems to have been the best that they could do. Angle the arms inwards and tuck them as out of the way as you can, to make them less obtrusive. Take the leg halves, you will see tabs on one shin, and grooves on the other. Push them together until they lock into place. Depending on whether or not you're making them a left or a right arm, 
rotate the elbow, aka the waist joint, until the knee joints, which bend 90 degrees, angle forwards the way an elbow on an arm would. This is where the prime armor accessory comes in again. Fold the fingers out from underneath the prime armor accessory. Rotate this peg so that it is pointing upwards. Rotate the thumbs so that they are pointing down. You may then use their ball sockets to angle the thumbs inwards. And there is your hand. Plug the hand into the hole at the base of the Dreadwind figure. And the arm is complete. He seems to have just as much obvious jet kibble as an arm as any of the aerial bots ever did. So if you're used to that, then you'll be used to this. Again, he will proportion perfectly with any Combiner Wars Gestalt, and is interchangeable with any pre-existing one, and most likely with any of the ones which are coming out soon as the power of the Prime's line. For size comparison, here is Power of the Prime's Dreadwind next to Generations Acid Storm Legends figure. Here is Power of the Prime's Dreadwind next to Combiner Wars Leader Class Thundercracker. And here is Power of the Prime's Dreadwind next to Funko Pop's He-Man Scare Glow. <laughs> If you can deal with the fact that you're getting another skydive, then Dreadwind is a strong addition. Positives include a good paint job, good detailing, strong articulation, multiple features through Titan Masters and Prime Masters. Negatives are that the wings jut out all over, he has a boxy underbelly, and it is another aerial bot with a new paint job. Yet despite the slight drawbacks, it's still a good figure, and I give Power of the Prime's Deluxe Dreadwind 7 out of 10 deaths. And that's the plain truth. If you rebuke me, honey, you lose me, then you'll be left alone, old baby. Tell the boy, and tell me I'm your own. <laughs>